Hi, my name is Kayla Schmilt. I'm the Education Programs Coordinator at the Detroit Historical Society. When I'm not in the museum teaching people about Detroit stories and why they matter, I'm doing ballroom and historical dancing with my best friend, Daniel. We've been dancing together for almost 10 years now. In celebration of the 75th anniversary of World War II, we are going to show you two dances that were very popular during the war years. We know many of you are social distancing right now. So are we. And we're going to show the lead and the follow part separately. Uh, you can practice by yourself or with someone you've been quarantined with. So the first dance we have is East Coast Swing. Just a little bit of history, East Coast Swing dancing was developed in New York in the 1940s as a response to Lindy Hop. While Lindy Hop is fast paced, and very showy. East Coast Swing is a little bit slower paced and focuses on technique. The first rule for both leads and follows in all types of swing dancing is do not dance flat footed. Rather dance on the balls of your feet. We're going to start with the leads basic step. You can dance this dance in pretty much any partner position. The two most common are closed position seen here and two hand open position which can be seen here. Leads always start with their left foot. You do a triple step to the left, a triple step to the right, and then a rock step. Rock step is when you shift your weight backwards onto your left foot and forward onto your right. Then do the moves again. Triple step to the left, triple step to the right, rock step. Triple step left, triple step right, rock step. That's the lead basic step. Let's see all that together. Next, we'll do the follows basic step. Follows always start with the right foot because we're always right. You do a triple step to the right, a triple step to the left, and then a rock step, but with your right foot going backwards. Triple step to the right, triple step to the left, rock step. Triple step to the right, triple step left, rock step. Then you've got it. Let's see that all together. The next dance we're going to do is the Collegiate Shag, or the Collegiate. This dance originated in the 1920s in the juke joints of the Carolinas and remained popular until World War II. It's a link between ragtime dancing, like the animal dances in Texas Tommy, and Lindy Hop and Jitterbug. We're going to start with the lead once again. You must dance this dance in closed position, slightly offset towards the left. This dance is a six beat dance and the steps are Slow to the left, slow to the right, quick, quick, slow, slow, quick, quick, slow, slow, quick, quick. Let's see all that together. Another variation on the basic step is with a toe tap. I'll demonstrate the follow part, which is right, tap behind with the left, left, tap behind with the right, right, left, slow, Tap, slow, tap, quick, quick. Daniel is demonstrating for the lead. Let's see how both of those look. Here comes the big one, the kicks. Leads. Rather than doing a slow step, you're going to do a kick and step. So leads will kick left step, kick right step, quick, quick. Left step, right step, quick, quick. Follows, same thing, only starting with the right leg. Kick, step, kick, step, step, kick, right, kick, left, quick, quick, kick, kick, quick, quick. If you are doing this with a partner, it is very important to be offset towards the left. When you are doing this with a partner, leads, your left kick is on the outside of the follow's right leg. And follows, your right kick is between the lead's legs. Be very careful with that one. The lead's right kicks between the follow's legs, while the follow's kick on the outside of the lead's right leg. Now it's your turn. Film yourself doing one of these two dances and tag the Detroit Historical Society in the video. We'd love to see your cool moves and maybe you can show us a few of your own. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.